calendar is known as, is known as Pentecost Sunday or Pentecost week, right? We recognize the Holy Spirit on that day, right? The birthday of the church. It was a birth for the New Testament church. The Res Resurrection Sunday, we celebrated on April 4th. We remembered Christ on the third day, on the first day of the week, rose from the dead. On Thursday, May 13th, was 40 days after the resurrection, which signifies Ascension Day. We were left as a people. They were left with a promise. That's kind of how we live right now, living with a promise, right? Uh, Pentecost Sunday comes, Holy Spirit on that day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, an extraordinary move almost 2,000 years, over 2,000 years ago, affects the world even today. The Lord makes repentance. The Holy Spirit makes repentance, salvation, uh, being filled with the Spirit, Christian discipleship, all possible. It's the birth. It was a birthday of the church in the midst of a, of a challenging season. Francis Chan writes that you might think that calling the Holy Spirit the forgotten God is a bit extreme. Uh, from my perspective, he writes, the Holy Spirit is tragically neglected and for all practical purposes forgotten. Many church attenders cannot confidently say they have experienced his presence or acts in their lives over the past year, and many don't believe they can. Well, that's not true according to Ephesians when Paul tells the church, be filled with the Spirit. Paul writes from prison at Stott in Ephesians to the church at Ephesus, perhaps near the end of his own life. So it represents kind of a mature Paul uh, who's developed a Christ, as a Christian leader and writes perhaps the summary of the Christian theme. As he looks back on his life, think how you would write your summary of reflective comments his conversion, his ministry experience with people. He seeks to tell the church about God's eternal plans and purposes for humanity, Jews, Gentiles alike, everyone. The main theme of Ephesians is often to be God's plan to reconcile people. Gosh, don't we need that today, right? That's still speaking to us today, which is accomplished through the death and resurrection of Jesus. He tells us the main theme of his, his book or his letter in chapter one, verse 15. He says, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of, the, of his glorious inheritance in the saints? It seems like the apostle hopes that we might better know God mm -hmm. and that we might grow in faith and love even in challenging times and seasons like we're in today. Those who are spiritually saved must continue to live in a relationship with God through the influence of the Holy Spirit. We find that theme in chapter five, right? Chapter five, verse one, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. This is how we live. Be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. When we read the word therefore, yeah. I was taught a long time ago, we always need to stop and say, what is it there for? <laughs> it's to understand based off this previous understanding, perhaps chapter four, verse 32, when it says, be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. Perhaps that's the therefore to say in light of that, this transition is how we should live as a Christian life in the midst of challenging times. And it's verse 18, the pivot verse right there. And do not get drunk or be drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. Right. Be filled, mm -hmm. right? That Greek phrase translated be filled does not necessarily refer to a one-time experience, but once and for all experience, keep going over and over, being filled, an ongoing way of life. It's putting on glasses on the way we live life, mm -hmm. being filled with the spirit. Mm -hmm. He contrasts being filled with the spirit with being filled with wine right. or having uh, out here in California, we call it under the influence, right? You get a DUI, you're under the influence of something. Paul contrasts that with being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, I don't really know what the, I don't even really know what I'm talking about when I talk about being under the influence of alcohol. Or, I don't know that stuff. Perhaps Paul didn't know either. Yeah. But that was the culture of the day. So he says, you're either under the influence of something or you're the, under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Be filled with the Spirit. 
And perhaps there may be not the influence of, 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 of alcohol or wine on, on, on us. They maybe it's under the influence of our own ego or of our own mm. materialism, our own humanism, uh, our own secularism. What influences us mm -hmm. in the way we live life? Be filled with the spirit. Matthew Henry, Henry, a commentator writes, people are very apt to complain of bad times. Mm -hmm. It were well if that stirred them more to redeem time. Mm. He says, drunkenness isn't a sin that never goes alone, but carries others into other evil. It is a sin very provoking to God. Mm. The other commentator, Barnes, writes, There's, there is, in fact, but one thing that produces this. It's poisonous. It gets into our system. The mind is disturbed and deprived of the use of reason, another person writes. It hurts the mind when we're under the influence of something. Memory and judgment deprives us of reason. You know, it just, it just, changes the way we think yeah. and our ability to think and the way we best then behave and live life and our actions toward one another. It influences the behavior and view of life. That's the Holy Spirit. The yes. antithesis of being under the influence of anything else is being filled with the Spirit. So we see in chapter five, you know, uh, how that, how he says that works out. If you are, if you are filled with the Spirit, right, he says right there, there's three things that result, at least three things that result right away. In Acts chapter, I mean, in Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse 19, he says, after being filled with the spirit, he says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Spirit filled people right. are encouraged to engage in three types of singing. Now, you know, Zion family, you all know how to sing. Right. So Amen. you got to know there's a lot of spirit there involved. That's how we treat one another. We sing yes. to one another. The idea of, of addressing one another is, is in our gatherings, we sing with and to one another. Mm. Psalms, right, refers to the Old Testament Psalms, which would have been probably the primary songbook for God's people, singing the word of God to, to and with each other. We can sing psalms like Psalms 103, I will bless the Lord, yes. O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes. We sing those songs to each other when we're filled with the spirit. Uh, we, as a church body, we've been looking at what's called the Psalms of Ascent that began with Psalms 120. And those are psalms that are thought to be the songbook of the people as they, they traveled uphill to worship the Lord in Jerusalem. If you look at some of those, some of those Psalms, we should be singing those to each other because we're filled with the spirit. Psalms 120, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. Psalms 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? Yes. My help yes. comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's what we should be singing in the pandemic. Amen. Amen. Psalms 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, yes. let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalms 123, to you I lift up my eyes. O oh, you yes. who are thrown to have, keep your eyes looking up in a pandemic. Hallelujah. Psalms 124, it said, had, had been the Lord who was on our side. Right. Let Israel say, where would I be? No Psalms time. 125 says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. Yes. You all are singing to yourselves when we sing psalms filled with the spirit, we sing psalms to one another. The other thing he says is about hymns. Now, I, 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 I know not everyone likes hymns, but hymns in that day as defined in that terms were confessions of faith in God mm. and the gospel of Jesus, which were sung by the early church. In general, a hymn is a song of praise to God that focuses on God's acts and God's characteristics. Mm -hmm. In our church, in our culture, we sing hymns like, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, yes. there is no shadow of turning with thee. Hallelujah. Thou changes not, yes. thy compassions they fail now. Pandemic or no, yes, right. as thou hast been, thou forever yes. will be. Paul says, sing hymns to one another. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Yes. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. That's a Fanny Crosby song. Yeah. Another hymn we sing is when peace like a river attendeth my way, mm. when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, yes, it is well, it is well with my soul. Beautiful song by Horatio Spafford. When we are filled with the spirit, we sing 
psalms to one another, hymns. And, you know, the other day I was with my mom. You know, my mom battles short-term memory. And I was telling my mom about singing. I brought up this old hymn book. We have this in Spanish, right? <laughs> and my mom was on the piano. She says, turn to page 53. Wow. Right? And I, I, she starts playing the song. And I'm trying to get through the book. I get to page 53 in Espanol. It says, si yo sé. Oh, and, he yes. goes, and I know. I yes, I know. Jesus right? blood. Jesus blood. Man, it tells us all about <laughs> that. Sing hymns. Then he says, when you're filled with the spirit, you sing spiritual songs. Spiritual songs can be songs that honor God and uplift the worshiper, including spontaneous songs. I love when you come in sharing the word. Those are mm. psalms. Those are songs that you're singing to one another spontaneously, yeah. right? Being filled with the spirit. Singing can be an expression of the Holy Spirit within us when we are filled with the spirit. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Yes. Being filled with the spirit also results in not only in singing, but in giving thanks. Verse 20 says, giving thanks always yes. and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Probably designed to be connected with that preceding verse about singing mm -hmm. and to note to denote that the proper subject of Psalms and hymns is thanksgiving yes. and praise. Mm -hmm. Singing is the language of the heart and it's a way of expressing joy, praise, worship, love, longing, and thanksgiving to God. There's one person who wrote that music is the universal language, right? Singing. He says, Paul says, always. Yes. Mercies are new every morning. Right. Faithfulness endures to all generations mm -hmm. at all times or in all times. When we are filled with the spirit, we give thanks always. It's not about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Andre Crouch wrote a song says, all that I have and ever hope to be, I owe it all mm -hmm. to be. Always and Forever. Well, no, it's really always and for, <laughs> and for everything. Yes. For things temporal and things eternal. For things seasonal and things everlasting. For things we can control and things we cannot control. For things we see, things we don't see. We thank God through Jesus. We are saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Being filled with the Spirit results in singing. Second of all, Paul says, giving thanks. And third of all, verse 21 says, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Right. Submission, it says, the principle of submission to the Spirit is being influenced in thought and behavior by the Holy Spirit. The idea of submission includes mutual respect and love. Here it is a voluntary submission of oneself to others out of reverence for the Lord. Christians, is, the Christian is called to such submission for every, even Jesus practiced submission to the Father and gave himself on behalf of humanity. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Right. Submission to the Spirit. When we're filled with the Spirit, we submit to the Spirit. Christian submission flows out of reverence for Christ. F.F. Mm -hmm. Bruce writes, this involves following Christ's example. God's love is a key component in our relationships. Smack dab in the middle. If you go to chapter five, verse one, it says be imitators as children. At the end of chapter five, it's how marriages should be working. It's all about submission, but that only works when we're filled with right. the spirit. Amen. Submission to the spirit and submission to one another. To submit, what is that? It's to give one's own rights for the sake of another. It comes from that Greek word, tosomai, which is a military term to line up mm. or under, to arrange under. The general principle of mutual submission in Christ involves interpersonal relationships and has as its goal to do what is best for others and to help them fulfill their God-given purposes. When we're filled with the Spirit, we mutually come in submission to one another, especially in a church setting and especially in a pandemic setting. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Yes. Well, I want to share with you, as Paul has shared with us in that church at Ephesus, be filled with the spirit yeah it's a command the letter to ephesians clearly shows that being filled with the spirit is intended to be the norm for believers the need yeah. for being filled with the spirit is just as vital today as it was back then mm -hmm. paul in his last words from prison encourages the church to be filled with the spirit pray for the ongoing work of the spirit in your life renewing your desire to follow the Spirit's leading and working through you to advance Christ's kingdom. Be filled with the Spirit. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Paul.
Hallelujah. If you want to thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes. Yeah, with this spirit. Hallelujah. And being submissive to one another. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, all right, let's go together in prayer and then and we'll, we'll close out tonight thanking God for all that He's done. Yes, Father, we Lord, come Amen. upon Amen. you and just praise you for Amen. all that has been given to us. Thank yes. you, Lord, for the, the challenge, Lord, to be filled with the Spirit, Lord. And we yes. do want to yes. invite you in every day. We want to be mm -hmm. submissive to the Spirit. We want to be submissive to one another. Uh, we want to follow your lead, Lord. We don't want to insist on our own way, Lord, but we want to be submissive to the Holy Spirit's lead. Bless, Lord, everyone on this line tonight who has heard this. Bless those who will hear the recording of it later on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the Lord. anointing that yes. we experience here tonight will continue, Lord, uh, so that anyone who hears this word, and then those, Lord, who hear us talking about what we heard tonight and what we learned tonight yes, about how the Lord Jesus. working on us. Thank Lord, you that for the word. Anointed as we share what we heard from the word of the Lord tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, everyone on this line. And as we go mm -hmm. to our separate ways, Lord, that everyone may be safe and happy and filled yes. with Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. God bless. Thank you. 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 Thank you.